and you wonder why we're confused when the experts are in disagreement. With America attempting to return to normal, many venues that cater to large crowds are installing sophisticated temperature sensors as a method of stopping the spread of COVID-19, commonly known as the coronavirus. The question is this, are temperature sensors an effective method of identifying those who are contagious and will they achieve the goal of keeping healthy people healthy? After much research, I formed an opinion and I firmly believe the answer is no. But there is some good news, so stay tuned as that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. I'm sure you're wondering why The Gadget Guru, of all people, is chiming in on this topic. Well, the answer is simple. I've spent my life in the new products industry, mainly focused on new and emerging technologies. My expertise is taking complicated topics, breaking them down and making them easy to understand. So here goes. Allow me to state the obvious, that we're living in a different world than we were just a few months ago, and I fully understand the reason companies are seeking solutions in order to reopen their businesses. I just don't think the installation of temperature sensing devices will be effective in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Here's why my answer is no. While temperature sensors are effective in determining if someone has a fever, at least on the skin surface, since medical experts have stated that people can be infected with COVID-19 for up to two weeks without exhibiting symptoms, such as a fever, I'm not sure how these devices can protect healthy people from becoming infected in crowded situations. In my personal opinion, temperature sensors provide a false sense of security, and I cringe when I hear corporate CEOs interviewed on the various business TV networks stating they are implementing these devices as a method of protecting those who enter their properties. It's important to point out that healthy people can exhibit higher than normal temperatures resulting in false positives. Examples of this range from someone who is experiencing hot flashes to someone who just had a drink in a bar. There's also the scenario where if someone is sick but feels it necessary to board an airplane, they can simply stop in the restroom prior to the security check, splash cold water in their face, and effectively register a lower temperature. Making things even more confusing are the use of terms such as pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic. The best explanation I heard is this. Asymptomatic means a person has the virus but doesn't exhibit symptoms, and they may never get symptoms. Pre-symptomatic, on the other hand, means a person is infected but doesn't have symptoms at the moment. But even though they don't have symptoms, a pre-symptomatic person is spreading the coronavirus without knowing it. Recently, this issue has become even more complicated as leading experts seem to disagree. For example, CDC current guidelines suggest the virus can spread from person to person, even if the carrier does not have symptoms. This is the reason the CDC is still recommending social distancing. On the other hand, Maria Van Kerkhove of the World Health Organization recently suggested that transmission from patients who do not show symptoms is not very common. Simply stated, she said, asymptomatic transmissions, well, they're very rare. Almost immediately after a nearly universal backlash, she walked back her statement by saying she was referring only to a few studies, not the complete picture. Then, Dr. Anthony Fauci, we all know him, he's the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Well, he chimed in by saying the World Health Organization walked back that statement as now making it clear that someone who is without symptoms can transmit the virus to someone who is uninfected even when they are without symptoms. And you wonder why we're confused when the experts are in disagreement. Making this even more complicated, it seems that many asymptomatic people don't have a fever, a cough, or shortness of breath. Instead, they have mild symptoms, such as a stomach ache or a headache, and may attribute the symptoms to allergies. But as we know now, those could be coronavirus symptoms, and the scary part is people could be spreading the virus when they think they are healthy. This is what makes things so scary. Unlike the flu, which exhibits symptoms pretty much when the infection begins, the coronavirus is proven to be very tricky.
In trying to cut through the mess to form an educated decision on how to live my life, here's how I view the use of temperature sensors. While temperature sensors can detect when someone is sick, they cannot detect if a person has the virus and in their most contagious stage, which, as we've recently learned, is 24 hours before the onset of symptoms. However, with so many companies now adding temperature sensors to their buildings and with visitors knowing right up front that temperatures will be gathered before entering a public place, well, that could dissuade some symptomatic people from risking exposure to others. And the temperature devices may be able to catch people who don't feel like they have a fever, but actually do. The other piece of good news is that while temperature sensors may not be fully effective in determining if a person has COVID-19, when flu season arrives, since a fever is one of the first symptoms that appears, these same sensor devices could be effective in controlling the spread of the flu in the future. I also cringe when I see the large groups of people gathering together to protest in the streets. Now, while I fully support the American right to peacefully protest, I think doing so while we're in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic will most likely result in a spike in the infection numbers and end up affecting others who come in contact with them, effectively spreading the virus even further. I truly hope I'm wrong on this. COVID-19 has proven to be tricky. At first, we were told it seriously affects only those over 60 years of age. And if we washed our hands and didn't touch our face, we were safe. Then we found out, well, that wasn't necessarily true. We were then told it spreads on surfaces, then told, well, not so much. We were initially told that children are safe, and now we know that's not the case. The media and some politicians spent countless hours telling us there weren't enough respirators, but as it ended up, there were plenty. They also told us there was no need for masks for anyone other than healthcare workers, and now we can't go anywhere without one. Now that we're more than 100 days of living in a coronavirus world, the one fact that is held true from day one is that someone can be infected with this virus and be contagious without showing symptoms. As I stated in the opening, there seems to be two types of people in our country today. Those who take social distancing seriously and only leaving home when absolutely necessary and those who feel that COVID-19 fears are overblown and wearing masks and avoiding public places is just simply not needed. While I'm not a doctor or a medical expert, and my advice comes from basic research, I will say that I'm not one to tell others how to live their lives. Since I'm not one who enjoys wearing masks, and since masks are only, at least somewhat effective, if everyone in the room is wearing one, I'm choosing to stay home until we have more answers about COVID-19. Questions, comments, and opinions are welcome. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.